from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. of youth are long, long thoughts. What dreams, what feelings shape the pattern that we call the innocence of childhood? We overhear a snatch of talk and think, how grown up and how childish. We look at their drawings and are amazed at the knowledge and passion and insight that they unwittingly reveal. Who can understand Tommy, even when he tries to tell us how he feels? Those who work with children, it's even hard for them, for no two children are alike, for behavior itself may hide as much as it reveals. Perkins said stop or something, and in a minute it was all over. Sure, Miss Perkins was still angry. So what? It seemed to Tommy she was always angry about something. In a minute she'd forgotten all about it, especially when Miss Moran called her out. Better get home for lunch or Mom will be sore too. And then suddenly he noticed it. After that, he couldn't exactly remember what happened. Mr. Kearns, this is Ms. Randall. Is he hurt? Oh, thank goodness. Uh, but I'm afraid that uh, my business isn't pleasant. I'm sorry to say that your Tommy has been caught stealing money from Miss Perkins' pocketbook. Oh, but that's impossible. I'm sure it's impossible. That, there must be some mistake. You got the wrong child. I'm afraid there's no room for doubt. Miss Perkins caught him in the very act. You mean she actually saw him? Oh, I can hardly believe that. I know. I don't like to believe it myself. But we've been missing things around here for some time. Little things. And now there's this matter of a bracelet. Have you, by any chance, missed a gold bracelet? Yes, I did lose a little gold bracelet. Why? In a school bag. You mean Tommy? No, no. I don't think I did give it to him. Oh, I don't know what to say. Well, that's what I'm calling you about. I've talked to Miss Perkins and Miss Folsom, our consultant, and we all agree that this isn't a matter for punishment. The punishment, in fact, might make it worse. Tommy wouldn't be behaving as he is if he weren't seriously upset by something that we don't understand at the moment 
and that he's not aware of himself. We think it calls for professional help. You know that uh, guidance clinic over on Pine Street? Yes. Well, it's set up to handle just this sort of problem. We feel very strongly that you should take Tommy over there. They're nice people, easy to talk to. Miss Black is the psychiatric social worker. And if you call her for an appointment, she'll make all the necessary arrangements. But what can they do? Tommy's my child. And it'll be up to you to do the most for him. But it's only fair to yourself to let a professional guide you. These things are never easy. May I tell Miss Black to expect your call? Yes, I suppose you better head. Uh, tell him to be careful when he crosses the boulevard. There's no policeman on duty at this hour. And how did you feel right at that moment when you realized they had all of the evidence? I suppose I was angry. Well, I, I was disappointed. Even afraid, I guess. Afraid of what? Afraid I'd failed. I had failed, you see. Tommy's been the one big thing in my life for the last ten years. The only thing I've cared about. The only thing I've lived for. You know. I know it's the mother who's responsible for the child's character. That's why I've tried so hard with Tommy. Why I've watched his habits and watched his friends. I've sacrificed everything so that we could live in a nice neighborhood. So we'd know nice people. We do have a nice, comfortable home. Really, we do. I'm sure you do. It's not as though I neglected Tommy and gone out playing cards or running to cocktail parties. I've tried to be a good mother right from the day he was born. I wasn't able to feed him myself. But I never let anyone else fix the formula. I followed all the doctor's orders religiously. I was determined to do a good job with Tommy. Even before Tommy was born. Yes? I promised myself that I'd try to do a good job bringing up my children. I wanted them to have everything I'd missed in childhood. You see, my mother was always so busy. Did she go to work? No, but we had a big house, and she ran it perfectly all by herself. Oh, it isn't as if she actually neglected us, but, well, she's just that sort of woman, always fussing about, never in one place more than a minute. Well, I wasn't going to be like that. And how do you feel about your mother now? Well, I love her, of course. That is, I guess I do. I wonder... Mrs. Randall, all this is helping us a lot in our understanding of Tommy. Why don't we go on talking about it next Wednesday? All right. Oh, don't wait for Tommy. He's probably still in with Dr. Marshall. We can send him along home. All right, I'll see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Michigan, Tommy's home state, is fortunate and being able to provide community clinics where troubled youngsters can be helped to grow up emotionally and where their parents can learn to play their part in the process. Often mothers will bring children to the clinic. Usually the suggestion for a first visit is made by the school or a doctor or sometimes by a judge. The staff of such a clinic is usually headed by a psychiatrist. In this case, Dr. Leonard F. Marshall. I don't care about your spelling or your arithmetic, Tommy. I'm not like Mr. Kearns. I'm a doctor. Something like the doctor you go to when you're sick. Who is he, by the way? Dr. Phillips. Oh, yes, I know him very well. How do you get along with him? Okay, I guess. Well, that's fine. As long as you get along so well with doctors and I get along so well with boys, we shouldn't have any trouble at all. Probably will even get to like coming here after a while. We're going to play a bit. We're going to talk a bit. 
probably talk mostly. You think you like to talk? About what? Oh, about you and about people you know. I don't know anybody. Oh, you must know somebody, the children in your class? Oh, them? What about them? I don't know them very good, except Mickey. Who's Mickey? Friend of yours? No. He's a kid who's always starting a fight. We fight a lot. That was April 3rd. <laughs> Tommy came to the clinic again on the 6th. Sit down, Tommy. This time I want you to tell me stories about some pictures I'm going to show you. Be sure to tell me the whole story, what went on before, and how the story is going to end. Suppose we try this one. I can't think of anything. Oh, any sort of story will do. Well, she won't let him in. Yes. She's telling the cop that it's not her boy. Why? Because she's making believe. Because she's ashamed. Why ashamed? Because her boy killed a man's dog. And if it's her son, she'll have to pay for the dog. Yes. You want to see me about Tommy Randall, Dr. Marshall? Yes. But we'll need John. He's giving Tom the picture story test right now. He'll be over soon. We'll wait for him for a few minutes then. These are some of Tommy's drawings that the school sent over. There's an awful lot of hate in them, and in the boy. Hate that's spreading over into his feelings about everyone. It's the reason for poor schoolwork, although his IQ is 115. It's what the stealing is all about. It's shown itself in every meeting we've had, even though we're getting along very fine. Well, he's up against a lot at home. That's just what I want to hear more about. Well, Mrs. Randall puts a lot of emphasis on their nice home life. For example, this is the sort of thing she would tell me. I saw Tompkins this afternoon. If you want to talk to me, come into the kitchen. I can't hear you when you're in there. You know I can't leave the food. All right, all right. I just said I saw Tompkins this afternoon. Is anything wrong? Did he send for you? Oh, he sent for me, but there isn't anything wrong. He just wanted to talk to me about New York. What about New York? The assistant sales managership in the New York office. Did I want to take it? Do you mean they're going to send you there? How awful. What's awful about it? They're not sending me. It's supposed to be a promotion. But New York, we don't want to go to New York. What about our home? What about Tommy? Frank. You didn't say yes, did you? No, I told him I'd think it over. Thank goodness. I was really frightened there for a minute. I should have known you wouldn't make a mistake like that. Why is it such a mistake? As a raise goes with it. Can't you see what they're trying to do? Please, Tommy. Your father and I are discussing grown-up matters. You go wash up and come when I call supper. Go along now. But, Mommy, man. You better do, as your mother says. Okay. I'll see you later. All right. They give you a raise, but you seem to forget that you have to start out all over again, building up a following. I might do very well in a big market like New York. Might, but there's no might about your commission here. At least we've got a decent roof over our heads. Besides, how could we leave all this? You can't wander around with a family the way you did when you were single. Of course, if it means a great deal to you to go to New York, I well, guess... It doesn't mean a great deal to me. I don't know. I suppose you're right, as usual. I just thought if 
I could get out of this rut, if I could... I suppose you're right. What could I do against that kind of competition? What kind of nonsense are you talking? Competition is a spice of life, as your father always used to say. We can't compete, it's time to lie right down and die. Oh, Mother, you don't know what you're talking about. No, of course not. I never do. Told me that ever since you were in high school. Well, what is it? You tell me, since I'm so stupid. Oh, we were just talking about a job. Something I think Frank's going to turn down. Turn down? Well, if that isn't just like him. But it means moving to New York. A chance to go to New York? I'm surprised at you, Frank. But Mother... Mother, nothing. If you can't get him to do something for himself and get someplace in this world, I don't know why I can't try. But, Mother, I'm the one that... I'm just telling you that it's important to get around this world if you're ever going to be a success in it. New York is just the place for you people. Oh, Mother. I know. You're going to say it's more expensive. Well, he can earn more. What's the matter with those broad shoulders of his? Afraid they'll crack? But, Mother, there's Tommy. I'll be very glad to take care of Tommy for you. You're not going to let that child rule your life. Now, don't argue with me, dear. Here, you go into the other room now, and I'll fix the dressing for this salad. Oh, Never I could mother. mix vinegar and oil together and make it taste like something. Tommy! Here I am. Tommy, didn't you do what I asked you? Oh, really? Go wash up, quick. Okay. We're not going to wait for you with supper. There's no use of fussing about the dressing if you leave the salad leaves wet. I don't know how many times I've told you, Agnes, that wet leaves dilute the seasoning. Well, let's sit down. Well, what's the matter with you? Oh, I, I don't feel very well, Mother. I've got a terrible headache. No, Frank, all of you go ahead and eat. I'm going to lie down for a few minutes. I'm not very hungry anyhow. Now, Tommy, mind your manners. When I'm not at the table with you, then it really counts. Oh, she'll be all right. She's had headaches like this ever since she was a kid. It's her stomach, I know. She never would eat. Yeah, I know. They seem to hit her all of a sudden. Wait a minute, Tommy. Your mother doesn't like you to tuck in your napkin like that. When she told you about all this, did she have any idea what caused the headaches? No, she believes she was born with them. There's an angry, frustrated woman. Well, they finished supper without her. No, Frank, don't bother with these dishes. I don't like men fussing with these things. Why don't you and Tommy have that game of checkers you've been talking about so long? Shall I let them? Hurry it up. I've got to leave in half an hour. No, Tommy. Now, Frank, you know perfectly well he has to work on his arithmetic before he goes to bed. We are going to work on it together every night until he begins to get passing grades. We agreed on that, Tommy, didn't we? Come on. Let them alone, Agnes. Let them enjoy themselves for a few minutes. What do you mean, enjoy? Who do you think this arithmetic is for? It isn't for me. I know how to do fractions. Besides, Tommy's not getting any allowance until he can prove he knows how to handle money. If these lessons are not for his good, what are they for, anyhow? What do you say, Tommy? Don't you want to do your arithmetic? Yeah. Well, come on. And so, headache and all, she went up and drilled the youngster for an hour. Poor woman. Poor child. And poor man. Yes. If he was looking for someone to mother him, I'd say he got more than he bargained for. Frank, you didn't say yes, did you? No, I told him I'd think it over. I suspect that he rather likes it when she boosts his feelings of failure and weakness. That may be why he picked her to begin with. 
He wants to be punished. I guess you're right, as usual. But I thought if, if I could get out of this rut, if I... Well, I guess you're right. But she does seem to be attached to him, and yet... Is anything wrong? Did he send for you? She still shows signs of deeply resenting him. She doesn't seem able to stand anything that makes him important. Do you mean they're going to send you there? How awful. Probably because all her life she was made to feel unimportant by her mother. What kind of contents have you been talking? Without knowing it, she inflicts on both her husband and son the kind of punishment she had. Well, what about it? You tell me, since I've been so stupid. It's no wonder, with her mother treating her forever like a child. Well, let's sit down. Does Mrs. Randall see that? She doesn't want to. She keeps talking about how much gratitude she owes her mother. That's what she thinks she's supposed to feel. The child doesn't know any better, but to accept all this is a matter of fact. To that boy, a grown-up has become a person who lets you down or punishes you. Wait a minute, Tommy. No, Tommy. Tommy senses that his mother uses him as a weapon against his dad. Now, Frank, you know perfectly well he has to do his arithmetic before he goes to bed. Come on. And yet she has an ambition to be a good mother. You can use that ambition. I know I can. After that stealing episode, she's willing to try almost anything. How is it going? Very well, I think. She has begun to go into the relationship with her husband, quite frankly and objectively. Pretty soon, I believe she will start talking about her mother more openly. Understanding the boy will be last. That will be hardest for her. It should be easier for her to understand his problems when she understands her own. If you can just get her to let up on him, give him some air of his own to breathe, I'm sure we can help him a lot. That hostility won't disappear overnight, but we can do a lot for it. Tommy's really a good boy. If given half a chance, I'm sure he'll prove it, even to her. For Tommy, things hadn't changed much by the 10th of May. She was the one that told Miss Turner that day, you know, about me. Yes, I know. What kind of a girl is she? Oh, just a girl. Sort of skinny. Did you ever have any fights with her? Not especially. She fights with all the kids. She's a teacher's pet. Tell me what happened yesterday. Well, we were on the front steps. The whole class. The kids in the back were pushing. And she pushed me. So I pushed her back. She fell on her face and her nose began to bleed. How did you feel about that? Oh, I don't know. Were you sorry for her? Sure. And were you a little bit glad, too? Oh, I don't know. I felt like laughing. Well, she was the girl that caused you so much trouble. Maybe you felt that a little trouble for her would even things up. Maybe. Maybe when you pushed her back, you happened to have your foot sticking out so she would trip? Maybe I did. Yes, maybe you did trip her, just so you could get even. Anybody would understand that. They would? Well, I would. People usually like to get even with people who do something to them. When somebody is mean to me, I like to be mean right back. I guess I did trip her. I guess you did. Tommy was daring to face himself before spring was over. Let me try now, Dr. Marshall. Wait a minute, I haven't had a chance to beat you yet.
There, that makes us even. Now it's your turn to shoot. Wish I could have a hundred turns to see how many bullseyes I could make. That's fine with me. I'll talk with you while you shoot. I was thinking what you told me the other day about Miss Turner. You thought she didn't like you. Why didn't she? She thinks I'm lazy. Are you? I don't know. I just don't know how to do fractions. Why not? Because I'm dumb, I guess. I just don't know how to do them. But you told me Tuesday that you were 10 and 7 twelfths years old. That sounds that you could handle fractions. In school, Miss Turner always gets me mixed up. What do you mean, mixed up? I don't know. Just can't think. You get frightened? No. Do you get mad? I guess so. Why? She never leaves me alone. She's always picking on me. How? Anytime there's any trouble, she always blames me. Why? I'm sorry, Dr. Marshall. The gun slipped. Oh, it didn't hurt very much, Tommy. Do you think people who like you hurt you sometimes without meaning it? I guess so. I know you do sometimes. And I know Mom and Dad do, too. Do you hurt people that you really like sometimes? I think so. Like when I hit you just a while ago. I did it on purpose, I guess. Yes, I know. Do you know why? I was mad at you for a minute. Do I ask too many questions? Yes. You want me to quit asking you questions when you come here? No. I like the questions you ask me sometimes. Especially after I answer them, like now. By the time the days got longer, Tommy had changed quite a bit. You get out your shirts, I'll put those name tags on for you. Okay. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Mom, do I have to go to camp? Now, what kind of a question is that? Do I? But I thought you wanted to go. Why, just last night you were all excited about swimming and sleeping in a tent. Have you changed your mind? Not exactly. Well, what is the matter? I don't know. Would you and Dad go to New York if I didn't go to camp? Well, what in the world has New York got to do with whether you go to camp or not? We'll be back in three weeks or even sooner if your father finishes his business quickly. Then I have to go to camp, don't I? I certainly don't understand you. Did you talk to Dr. Marshall about camp? Tommy, have you? Have I what? You heard what I asked. Have you talked to Dr. Marshall about camp? I asked you a question. Dr. Marshall says I don't have to tell you what we talk about. Why, Tommy, you little... Well, as a matter of fact, you don't have to if you don't want to. I just thought I could help you. I do want to go to camp, but... Then what's all this fuss about? It's no fuss. I'll just be lonely in camp. Not with a hundred other boys. You'll be too busy to be lonely. If I didn't go to camp, could I go on seeing Dr. Marshall during the summer? I suppose you could. You like Dr. Marshall, don't you? Sure, he's my friend. I know, and I think it's fine. Even if you do go to camp, you'll be seeing him again in the fall. If I do go to camp, I could tell him all I do there. He likes to listen to me. I like to listen to you, too. I know, but he kind of understands me. That hostility won't disappear overnight, but I'm sure we can work on it. It should be easier for her to understand his problems when she understands her own. I know what you mean. It's a wonderful thing. 
Hey, Mom. What's this? I almost forgot. Tommy's a good boy. And if he's given half a chance, I'm sure he'll prove it, even to her. A good boy? What's that? A mentally healthy boy, maybe. A boy who is learning to express his feelings without hurting himself or others. Tommy is just beginning to find such health because he is being understood and appreciated and respected. But such understanding doesn't always require the services of clinics or doctors or trained psychologists. More and more of us, as parents and teachers, are learning to accept children as human beings who naturally react with fear and anger when they are denied the love and understanding that they need. A good boy, not sugar and spice, and not all puppy dog tails. Tommy is a real person. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.